Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Today's topic are minimal relations or more strictly speaking, minimal polynomials. But I would like to think of them as being minimal relations satisfied by certain elements. So let me just jump right into it to explain what I mean. So um, consider this element here, uh, which is certainly an element of C, uh, but it's, it's not an element of um, Q which is not super hard to see, uh, but maybe it's not obvious, but it's certainly not super hard to see. And it's kind of a lot of questions in Galois theory or question of field extensions are about what is the minimal relation satisfied by such an element, square root of two plus square root of three in certain fields. Let's say over Q, which basically means the following. So over Q, it would mean the following. I would write, would like to write down Z, so Z is my element here. I would write to, uh, like to write it down as a Q linear combinations of basically powers of itself. So I would like to find a polynomial with um, coefficients in Q, which annihilate my element Z. And it's not super easy to see that this is actually the right element. This is actually a polynomial, so um, so if you replace Z by X, capital X, then you would see that this is actually a polynomial in QX. So this is a polynomial that annihilates my element Z, which is not trivial to see. And the whole point about having a theory of field extensions is to make those arguments easier, not as I did it, prove it by hand or construct it by hand. Okay, honestly, I didn't construct it by hand. I just asked Mathematica to do it. But that's cheating anyway. Anyway, so you don't want to do that by hand. You want to find uh, a way to do this. And as you can see, this gets a little bit, well, it's not easy, right? So why should there be an, a coefficient 36 turning up? God knows. Um, anyway, so the coefficients are those things in the boxes. And you can ask this question over any field. So certainly this element, you can think of it as, as being uh, extended over, over this field. So now you allow coefficients from this field. In particular, I could write something like this. And you will see that actually a degree two polynomial is sufficient. So this is degree two. This is degree six that I wrote down. And this is degree two, and it's pretty obvious that you can't do better. It's, it's not completely obvious, but it's, it's relatively clear that you can't do better. So degree two is minimal. Why degree six is minimal? I don't know, we'll see why. Uh, so that's the whole point why you want to have a theory of field extensions because this is really not trivial. Um, if you work over a field like this, you can write down coefficients like those. Um, six, certainly this is good, but also something like three times square root of two. And you realize um, maybe I shouldn't use blue, maybe I should use orange, that a degree three polynomial is sufficient. And again, this is not quite obvious. Maybe you can try to do it, but it's certainly not quite obvious. And the top uh, field I would like to consider is obviously it, it lives in this field. And in this case, it's, it's really, really simple. You can just write down a degree one equation, right? Of course, this will annihilate if I, if I just, because now I can use my element Z as a coefficient. So basically what I've written down here is Z minus Z, right? just in this polynomial fashion. So I would like to find those minimal relations depending on my field. And for even for this relatively simple element, it doesn't seem to be a relatively simple problem. Why is, so this degree six equation, as I said, I constructed it using Mathematica, which is saying that there is some, some reasonable algorithm to do it. But if you would try to do it by hand, it will take you a while. And proving that this is minimal is another uh, part, right? So this is also not obvious. So that's why I would like to have a, um, a theory of field extensions. In this case, a theory of minimal polynomials. So those, all of these things will be minimal polynomials. The minimal relation satisfied by, by this element and depending on the, on the field. The question is, is this even well posed? Uh, what does it mean to be a minimal relation? Well, a minimal would be minimal with respect to degree, but there could be still two completely uncomparable polynom polynomials, relations of the same degree, um, which annihilate my element. But it turns out that this question is actually really well posed. 
So here's the reason why. So pol polynomials annihilating Z form an ideal. That's easy to see. So they, there's an ideal in ground uh, by polynomial ring. And recall that actually polynomial rings uh, over fields form a principal ideal domain, which means there exists. So this is the existence then statement. Yes, indeed, I can ask this question. There exists some polynomial spanning this ideal. And this, of course, will be the minimal polynomial associated to Z. Um, but it also says that it's unique up to scaling. And unique up to scaling basically means, OK, if whatever, this polynomial, the, the red one, annihilates by Z, then I can multiply it by 5, and it will still annihilate my Z. Sure, I don't care about scaling. We're doing ring theory, right? Multiplication by units, we don't care. Um, so this says it's unique. It exists, and this is unique. So this is actually a well-posed question, right? So um, my minimal polynomial is a minimal relation in the sense that I have the generator of this annihilating ideal. So this ideal of polynomials that annihilate Z. So this question is actually a well-posed question, just, just to be sure. Remember that all I did, so what, what takeaway message from this, from this slide, all I did is I said, OK, I have my ideal. Uh, given by polynomials and annihilate my element, so such that the uh, element is root of those polynomials, and I argued that okay, there's a unique, there's a generator of this ideal, and up to scalars, this one is unique, and that's my minimal polynomial, my minimal relation uh, associated to my chosen z. So z is fixed. Uh, so that's question is well posed, but how can we prove minimality? Uh, and again, coming back to my example from before, I claimed that those things are minimal, but actually, how do we see that? And the idea is to use the tower law. Um, the tower law was this, um, let's say M over K, you have fields M and K, this is equal to, now you can sandwich in uh, an intermediate field. And usually, sometimes those numbers are easier to compute. That's the tower law. And you can iterate that as, if you want. That's why it's called tower law. And in particular here, so those, these two could be my fields L. This is the one I'm interested in, M. And this is a small one, K. And I would like to know M over K. I would like to know this box here. And all I need to know is the following. I can, I can write down this part, just separate it from the rest. And the tower law tells me now, because I can now, this is very easy to show, right? So square root of two and the minimal relation for square root of two over Q is X squared minus two. Um, why? Well, you can't, square root of two is an irrational number. So you, 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 you can't find a polynomial of degree one. So this one does the job and so you're done. So this one is of degree, is of degree two. So this is degree two and I, and I should put degree two actually in, in green because I did it here in green as well. And this one here is similarly of degree three. That's also not hard to see. So those steps are easy. And for the right-hand side, I consider, of course, this tower law here, this way around. Okay. And then the tower law tells me that my question mark box, my purple question mark box, is a number that is divisible by two and three. Okay, so it is six, for example, it could also be 12, but I already found that the polynomial of degree six, so I'm good. So I know that actually this is six, so I'm good. But now I can fill in the, the other numbers because I know that this is six. So I, then I know that the other two are two and three. Uh, just be careful that those things swap. So this is this crossing here, this three goes here, and this two crosses to here, so this two actually goes here, right? So you can you can calculate those degrees, or it actually, this two goes here. So this is two, and the three also goes here. So using the tower law, you, you look at this picture, you look at this picture, let me repeat, you look at this part of the picture, you get a number from it, in this case two, you look at this part of the picture, you get a number from it in this case three. You know that the top one by tower law is now divisible by both of them. 
So it is six minimally. And that's the only thing you want to prove because you already found the polynomial of degree six. Right? So in total, the guessed minimal relations are minimal. Okay, so let me summarize what we have seen. Um, so you have those two fields, the small one, which is Q, you can think of it as being Q, the big one, which is C, and you take the polynomial ring and it takes this so-called evaluation morphism. That's just going from the polynomials to the big field. It just takes a polynomial and evaluates as your pre-chosen element Z, okay? And the minimum polynomial is exactly the generator of this, um, of this ideal, of, of the kernel of this map. The kernel of this map is an ideal and it's exactly the generator of that ideal. And you, because you have this choice of scalar, you, you would say, okay, it's monic. You can normalize things, it doesn't matter so much. The minimal polynomial, the minimal relation is the generator of that ideal. And as I explained before, exactly the same arguments, this exists because you have a principal ideal domain, it's unique up to scalars, so the question is well posed. And it's really what we care about because um, the evaluation morphism actually descends to an isomorphism. So my polynomial ring modulo, the, um, uh, the relation spent by my minimal polynomial, that's ex exactly my field extensions by, by this element, right? And then, of course, something like this is clear. Um, the, the, the degree of the field extension is the degree of the minimal polynomial. Okay, so let me uh, repeat. So we had this idea that the uh, minimal polynomial is a generator of the annihilating ideal. We um, this basically just says how to prove minimality. And now you can use the technology uh, with this definition. You can use the technology available from field extensions to calculate or from polynomials and polynomial ideals to calculate your field extensions. And that's kind of the whole idea. Okay. Um, in the particular, you can definitely use a computer algebra program to do it. So here I have some code in Mathematica, link is of course in the description. And Mathematica can calculate minimal polynomials. So I ask Mathematica here to calculate the minimal polynomial of x squared minus two which is of course x of the roots of x squared minus two. These are square plus minus square root of two. Um, and this is of course x squared minus two. And similarly, I ask it for the roots of this, this polynomial uh, in my notation here, y cubed minus three. And this was at least one of the roots is uh, our uh, favorite element in R, well, maybe not our favorite element in R, but it's this element in R, third root of three. And I also ask it for the minimal polynomial associated to Z, and that's the one we've, we've seen before, the degree six um, minimal polynomial that I guessed. So here you see how I guessed it. I used Mathematica. And the point is Mathematica, well, there's an algorithm to do it, right? Now that you know what a minimal polynomial is, now that we know what a minimal polynomial is supposed to do for us in the theory of field extensions, it might make sense to ask for an algorithm to, to calculate this minimal polynomial. And here's a very nice algorithm, which basically shows that algebraic numbers uh, form a field. Because the, the main question whether about algebraic numbers is usually if an algebraic number alpha and you have an al algebraic number beta, the question is, is this still an algebraic number? Meaning, is it a, a root of a polynomial? Um, this is exactly the question I, I try to address here um, with this element. So this certainly is a root of a polynomial. This certainly is a root of a polynomial, I mean, with rational coefficients. So is, is the sum a root of a polynomial with rational coefficients? And I just, did it by hand uh, or by Mathematica, whatever. Um, but here's a general construction. This is how Mathematica would do it. So if you have two um, algebraic numbers, so you have two minimal polynomials, uh, one of them has coefficients A, one of them with coefficients B, whatever. And then you, what, what you would do is you would kind of do this funny substitution here. So you want to compute this element Z, um, which is the sum of x and y. And you have a minimal, oh, the sum of x and y, of course. And you have a minimal polynomial attached to x and you just substitute 
z minus y, which is x, of course. And you just calculate what this minimal polynomial does. And then there's a trick from linear algebra. It's called taking the resulant. Uh, link is in the description. It's linear algebra. It's calculating a determinant of um, of a certain of a certain element, and you get um, this 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 uh, resonant here falls us to things, which is a polynomial in Z, and that polynomial always will annihilate your element Z. The question that remains is whether this is a minimal polynomial that annihilates it, and that's not 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 easy. So substituting polynomials is, of course, breakfast. That's, that's why I write breakfast. Um, I I'm not going to explain what the resonant is in this video. It's not so hard. It's explained in the description. Just as I said, it's just you write down a matrix in your coefficients, and you take the determinant, basically, of that matrix. That's basically what you do. And you get a polynomial in the, in the variable z, in this case. Um, so it's, it's a way to el eliminate y from the expression. So you get a new polynomial z. And that polynomial always will always annihilate your given uh, z and your given x plus y, which immediately shows that a plus alpha plus beta here actually is an algebraic integer. Right? I, I found a polynomial that annihilates it. The open question is whether this is um, actually minimal or not. And this is a bit tricky. Um, so Mathematica actually says that they have a very smart algorithm. I haven't found any um, explanation of what this algorithm is that can actually factor a polynomial up to degree 100. That's what they claim. I don't know what this algorithm is. Uh, factoring polynomials usually is not a very easy problem. But anyway, up to that point, it's uh, kind of linear algebra. And that's what you want, because linear algebra is much easier than algebra. And you have reduced the problem of finding minimal relations for elements to linear algebra plus a factoring problem, which is maybe not so super easy. But as I said, Mathematica claims that they have a good algorithm. Don't know what it is, but anyway. Um, anyway, let me wrap up. So this idea of minimal polynomials comes just from finding the minimal relations satisfied by certain elements in certain field extensions. So you kind of want to calculate the degree of those field extensions. And that's where, where you use your definition of the minimal polynomial, which is the generator of the annihilating idea. OK, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you next time.